So, this is the second part of my World Championships report. I'll be going through all the matches I went through in the tournament. I've already done all the EV spreads, so if you're looking for that, that's in the previous video. There'll be a link in the description, so you can go and check that out first to see what I was using. But I'll be going through all the matches in this video because it was getting too long in the first report, so I split it up into two. So, first round, I get paired against a nice easy opponent who came second in the world. Hooray. And, on top of that, he's got a really bad matchup for me. As I've said in the previous video, Mega Gengar with Kyogre is really bad. It's not the worst, unless they have Will-O-Wisp, and Jonathan had Will-O-Wisp. So, this matchup was awful for me. In game one, he pretty much steamrolled me. The only way I could have got through him was with my Xerneas, and I managed to Geomancy with it um, after I'd Icy Winded his Gengar with my Rayquaza. So I did reveal that bit of information game one, which I don't like to do, but it was necessary, so I could find out if I could Geo in front of the Gengar at minus one, which I could, so my theory held true there, because I didn't outspeed max speed Gengars at minus one with my Xerneas, but I outsped his, which was good, and I, able, I was able to Geo, survive the Sludge Bomb, but then the slu second Sludge Bomb poisoned me, which pretty much sealed game one. There was no way back after that. I had the tiniest chance anyway, and I was probably going to lose game one without the poison, but the poison definitely sealed it. So I just basically played for a little bit more information, and I'm all that I found was his Bronzong was Lumberry, which doesn't really affect me at all. But then in game two, I got uh, into a position where I geo with my Xerneas again, and it was on pretty much no HP. But he had brought he just brought in his Talonflame, and I had to predict him not to attack my Xerneas because I had a Gyarados next to me, and I could have just waterfalled the Talonflame and protected my Xerneas. So I had to predict him to attack my Gyarados instead of attacking my Xerneas, predicting the Protect. I got that right, and I managed to do a huge chunk to both his Pokemon, and I was able to clean up from there. And then Game 3, he led his Gengar Bronzong, which was what he led in Game 1, and I managed to predict that with Rayquaza Arcanine. So, because of the airlock, if I just didn't mega evolve my Rayquaza, I could freely Flare Blitz the Bronzong slot. He could have switched into Kyogre, that would have still taken damage. The rain wouldn't have prevented my Flare Blitz, though, because of the airlock. He stayed in with his Bronzong, and because my Arcanine KOs all non-heatproof Bronzongs and he was Levitate, the Bronzong got KO'd. He would have switched my Rayquaza, but I Icy Winded, so his Gengar was slower than my Arcanine, and I could just Flare Blitz the Gengar again. And then that was two knockouts in two turns. And then I was just pretty much able to clean up from there. So I actually managed to take this really bad matchup in the first round. And I managed to beat the person who came second. So, therefore, I was second. That's not how it works. I wish that was how it works. But, round two, against Ricardo Apamia. I'm so sorry if that's pronounced wrong. I'm going to apologise right now if I pronounce any of the names wrong. Because I'm not used to the foreign names and I'm probably going to get all of them wrong. But he's just um, created a Twitter, so go and follow him. He's the only ever person to win a regional with Rayquaza Mewtwo. That's really cool. Go and follow him. He was using my worst possible matchup that I had theoried before the tournament. So, already two horrible matchups for me. Marwal Kyogre is really, really bad. But luckily, I had had some practice with it before. So I did have a little bit of an idea what to do. But he also had Crobat. So that kind of ruined my tactics, because my tactics was to let the Mawal Iron Head my Xerneas as I Geomancy up, and then I can just intimidate the Mawal so I live, and then I can knock it out. But because he has Crobat, I can't use my Xerneas. So I can't remember what I led in game one, but I didn't leave my Xerneas, which was my us usual tactic. And I did actually get into a position where I could Geomancy with my Xerneas. I can't remember if he brought Crobat or not, but he definitely led Mawal. And I did manage to get into a position where I was geomancied up with my Arcanine. And then I could Helping Hand Moonblast the Moa. I had got a little bit of chip on it as well. So I could Helping Hand Moonblast it as the Kyogre switched in. Which was really, really nice. So I took game one. And then game two, I also had geomancied with my Xerneas. I led with it this time. Because I didn't expect him to lead with his anti Xerneas stuff. Because I didn't lead with it. And he ended up leading with Zapdos Kyogre. And I led with my Scrafty Xerneas, and I faked out the Zapdos in case it was roaring. And it did end up moving last as it flinched, so I'm pretty sure it was roaring. So next turn I Moonblasted it instead of Dazzling Gleamed to make sure that I knocked out the Zapdos. I did take two fully powered Water Spouts at, while I was Geo though, so I did take a lot of damage. And I think it put me down into the red, but it was worth it so I didn't get roared. I did a nice chunk to the Kyogre with Low Kick. 
and then it got into a position in the end where he had a full health, yeah, full HP Rayquaza, which I didn't know whether it had the Sash or not, but it didn't have Life Orb, and his full HP Moal against my Arcanine and my no HP Xerneas. So I had to predict him again, like I did in the match against Jonathan, I had to predict him to predict my Xerneas Protect and knock out my Arcanine because I could have protected him Flare Bits the Mawile and then it was a 2 on 1. So I attacked through that potential Extreme Speed or Sucker Punch and I Extreme Speeded the Rayquaza to break any potential Sash. He ended up Sucker Punching my Arcanine which failed and then I Dazzling Gleamed to knock out the Ray and do a huge chunk to the Mawile and then I could just clean up from there. So that's the second terrible matchup that I actually managed to win which is awesome. So next one against Krell Croc. I'm not going to try and pronounce his name because I'll get it wrong, but I didn't know his name until someone told me he was Krell Croc after the match, so I, I definitely recognise the name Krell Croc. Being successful around Nugget Bridge. So he was using a Xerneas Rayquaza team, so just like mine, it's, it's very similar to mine, it had four of the same Pokemon, and then a Prankster Safeguarder, and then Thunderous instead, and I had Gyarados, so I did see, because he was paired up against Shoma Hanami, in round one on the screen, I did manage to see that the Arcanine was red card. So that was very key going into the match. So he led off with his Meowstic and Xerneas in game one, and I led off with my Whimsicott and Xerneas, and I believe we uh, both led that in the first two games. And then he faked out my Whimsicott as we both geode, and then he quick guarded my potential uncle, which I managed to read into and tailwinded instead. My Xerneas was originally fast anyway, so it didn't really make that much difference. Then I was just moonblasting his Xerneas as his Meowstic switched out into his Arcanine on the potential red cards. I managed to switch in my Arcanine and extreme speed his Arcanine so that it activated the red card first so I could Dazzle and Gleam and then clean up the match and that was my phone because I'm very professional. But then game two, he revealed the Yawn on his Meowstic and I had safeguarded with my Whimsicott first round. So for him to go to, for the Yawn uh, first turn was like a very risky play for him because I could have safeguarded as well. So I was suspecting Thunder Wave over Yawn, but Yawn was what happened. And I didn't know the mechanic that if you safeguard on the um, second turn of the Yawn where you're just drowsy, you still get put to sleep. And that was really bad for me because my Xerneas got put to sleep. And then he was able to steal all the momentum to take game two. And then in game three, I don't think I led my Whimsicott. I can't remember what I led. Maybe my Scrafty. Actually, no, it was my Arcanine um, potentially roaring his Xerneas, wasn't it? I think so. And then, yeah, it, it basically, we had both Geodes, I think I had roared him out, and then it came down to three versus two on my side, and the timer was on like two minutes, and I was going to win on time, there wasn't really a way he could bring it into a position, if I just protected my Xerneas at the right point, there was no way he could bring it back on time, because one of his Pokemon was Meowstic, and the other one was Rayquaza, I think, on like no HP. Yeah, it was on no HP. It was it. No, it was a life orb Rayquaza, and it was in a life orb hit range. So there was no way he would have been able to knock out two of my Pokemon. But on the um, third to last turn, I believe he fl flare blitz to knock out his own Arcanine with a recoil. But he ended up burning my Xerneas at the same time. And the HP I had on the Xerneas was exactly two burn hits. So if I wouldn't have got burned, or if I had had one more HP, I would have won the game on time. But because he burned me, my Xerneas got knocked out, my Rayquaza was in extreme speed range from his Rayquaza, and because I uh, haven't got much speed on mine, he was definitely going to outspeed me. He extreme speeded, my Rayquaza knocked both of the Rayquazas out because of his life orb recoil, and my Arcanine was asleep from a previous yawn, and it ended up being Meowstic against Arcanine, and the timer went out, he had more HP, and he won. Which was really unfortunate. I would have definitely taken the game without the burn, so that was a real shame. But it was a really, really good match, so I can't really complain that much. Like, I, I played sillily with the not knowing the safeguards would not stop the, the yawn on the second turn, so if, if I'd have known that, I could have played a lot differently. But there we go, so 2-1. Can only afford one more loss now in the tournament. And then next round, so I had just played Krell Croc, who was second at the Korean Nationals, and then next round, I ended up playing the career national champion, which is quite amusing. He was using Big B, so a match ball I was comfortable with. But in game one, he had got Trick Room up with his Bronzong, and I just sent in my Scrafty. So I had the fake out potential, but then I let the timer go too far down when I was deciding my moves, and I ended up rushing my fake out target and clicked on the wrong one, 
which lost me all the momentum because then he just got up gravity and swept with P-Blades, basically. So game one went horribly for me when it could have gone all right because I'd have still probably had the momentum if I'd have faked out the correct target, but that was <laughs> just a silly mistake on my part. But game two, I was able to test out another one of my theories. Because he had knocked out all my Pokemon, he didn't see the Whimsicott, so he would have seen no way for me to stop his Smeagol. So my theory was that if the opponent doesn't see the w a way to stop the Smeagol, they'll use it in game two. And he led Smeagol Xerneas. I led Whimsicott Xerneas, and he Dark Voided on my Safeguard, which was lovely, because then I just swept through with my Xerneas. Because I could just Encore him. I, no, I think he had Crafty Shield, so I couldn't Encore him. But I Tailwinded. He was faster than my Xerneas, so I Tailwinded and outsped him, and then swept through with my Xerneas. That was lovely. And then in game three, he led his Salamence Bronzong as I led my Arcanine Xerneas. Going back to my original uh, Big B lead. And because he had intimidated me, he would have known that I wouldn't be able to knock out his Bronzong with a Flare Blitz. So I expected him to Trick Room instead of Gyro Ball against my Xerneas because I was obviously going to Geomancy with my Xerneas. So I expected Trick Room over Gyro Ball. And I roared his Bronzong instead of Flare Blitzing and he went for Trick Room. So I stopped that, I had a Geomancy Xerneas, and then I just swept through with it, which was lovely. So, that's one <laughs> one national champion down. Spoilers. But the next one was against a relatively unknown player going into this tournament, I think. He had only won a couple of nationals before, maybe come second at Worlds before this. And I think he did some, like, a little, he did alright in this tournament. So, everyone knows what this team is. It's a will o Genga, which is horrible for me. If it wasn't a will o Genga, I would have had a decent time I would say because my Rikaza would have been really good against his team but because he had Will-O-Wisp that was really bad but game one I played probably the best game I have ever played I called every single one of his protects I made the perfect play pretty much every single time it's such a shame that this set wasn't on stream if there was a chance for me to be on stream it was surely when I was against Wolfie but we weren't put on stream Wolfie was actually put on stream the next match which was unfortunate, so I missed out on stream then. But I really wish the game one would have been saved forever, because I played so well. I made every single perfect play. I called every single Wolfie Protect, which is like, like the w way he plays, because I knew his playstyle, because I'm a big fan of his. So I knew what his playstyle would be, and I called every single Protect on the Gengar and always doubled into the slot next to it. And it, it was just lovely. I was even in a position where I could assert dominance against him at the end game, because I just knocked out the partner uh, of the Bronzong. The Bronzong was on 1 HP and there was a Kyogre in the back that was going to get knocked out um, to, I think I think I deal with my Xerneas, or even if I hadn't, it was in range of my Pokemon, and I ended up roaring his Bronzong instead of waterfalling it just to assert dominance, and it, like, I can't believe I was in a position to do that against Wolf. Like, game one was just one of the best games I've ever played, and I'm so sad that I couldn't save it. But game two, Game 2 was sad, because I was in such a good position. I geoed with my Xerneas, and I was at full HP. And he had his full HP Hitmontop without Fake Out, and his Bronzong at full HP. But Kyogre and Gengar were in Xerneas range. So I could have knocked them out with my Xerneas, just Moonblasting them. And I think one of them was in Dazzling Gleam range. I think the Gengar was. I think I'd done at least half to the Gengar. But I had a Rayquaza that was on almost no HP and burned, with a full HP Scrafty in the back. So I switched out my Rayquaza into the Scrafty because I considered the close combat onto the Rayquaza slot because that was probably the one that made the most sense because it would have put me in range of burn anyway. But I needed the Scrafty out because then I could just stop the Bronzong from KOing my Xerneas or getting up Trick Room. So I think he actually switched in the Bronzong that turn as well. So he, he ended up close combating my Scrafty on that turn, which I would have lived easily at minus one, but he crept my Scrafty. And that was so bad, because then I just had a no HP Rayquaza that was going to die to burn, and then a Xerneas against Bronzong and a Mega Gengar, which I couldn't deal with both at the same time without a partner. So that was really unfortunate. If the Scrafty would have lived, I had Fake Out potential, I could have stopped the Bronzong from doing anything. I could have knocked out the Hitmon top with either a Dazzling Gleam or Moonblast. If he had a Wide Guarded, then, I don't know, Moonblast would probably be in the better play, because I would have definitely knocked out the Hitmon top. The Gengar and the Kyogre in the back were in Moonblast range, so I could have Moonblasted them, or predicted the Protect and knock off and Moonblasted the Bronzong. So all I had to do in the end was call one more Protect, and I had called pretty much every single Protect up until that point. So I was in a position where one more Protect, I had to call and I won, but he crept the Scrafty, and there was no way back in game two. 
In game three, I think I tilted a little bit because I ended up letting my Rayquaza get burned turn one. Rayquaza was not the lead in game three. He led Gengar hit him on top all three times and Rayquaza was not the lead against that. So I let it get burned. I couldn't get Geomancy up at any point with my Xerneas and he pretty much just swept through me in game three. So that was really unfortunate. I just wonder how the tournament would have gone if he wouldn't have crit my Scrafty because he would have gone X2 instead of me and he would have faced all the different opponents. So would he have still cut? Would he have still gone on to the final and won? Or like all the opponents would have changed throughout the whole tournament. So it's crazy to think that that one crit changed the entire tournament. Like congrats to Wolfie, he did so well winning, but just that crit. <laughs> A little bit salty as you can tell, but who wouldn't be when you've just lost to the person who came became the world championship on a crit? Not so good. But let's stop complaining, move on to the next uh, opponent because I can't lose anymore. I had to stay focused. Against Matthias Roa from Chile. I didn't know, um, I, no I did know what his name was. I did recognise his name is probably the better sentence, but I didn't know like who he was online, but someone told me he was Boa afterwards. And apparently he doesn't have a Twitter. I did try and find his Twitter. But I did recognise his name. And he was ended up using Groudon Kyogre with a Crobat. So if I see a Crobat, I'm not going to lead Xerneas. So I can't remember what I led in game one. I think I led Rick. No, I led Rayquaza. I can't remember what next to it. Probably Gyarados. And he ended up leading Crobat Amoongus. His Amoongus had a Sash. So as I dragged the center it, it survived and spawned my Rayquaza. But with that lead, he didn't have any momentum on his part. So he could only just Super Fang with his Crobat. I think he missed three times with his Super Fang over the set, but the, I don't think they mattered in the end, because I was just knocking out his partner all the time, because I was able to Thunder Wave them, or Icy Wind them and then Waterfall them with my Gyarados, which is for the Groudon, then like, he just had no momentum. And then in game two, I led with my Scrafty Gyarados against his Kangaskhan Crobat, I Thunder Waved and low kicked his Kangaskhan as he low kicked my Scrafty and Tailwind did, and then I was just able to low kick the Kangaskhan, knock it out, and then roar myself. So I ruled out my own Scrafty, so I could get Intimidate back, and Fake Out back, and leave the Crobat on the field, because I didn't want to knock out the Crobat until the end. And then I ended up, uh, he adds his Tailwind up, but I had my Xerneas in, and then I ended up Geomancying on the final turn of Tailwind, so that I had the speed advantage, and then he just forfeited at, um, after that turn. So, 4-2. One more game. One more game and I top cut. And I'm against the Japanese national champion. So, two, <laughs> two national champions one former double national champion but yeah that's not a match a matchup I want to see on pretty much my do or die game going into cut he ended up using his nationals winning team with Amoongus over Cress and he didn't bring Amoongus so and he, he shouldn't have brought Cress if he had it so it didn't make a difference but this is a matchup that should be in my favor because I'm good against Rayquaza Groudon his Groudon can't do anything to my Rayquaza the only thing that's a little bit of an issue would be the Sylveon because that can chunk my Rayquaza, even though if even though I have the Assault Vest. And it could potentially... No, it will survive my Dragon Ascent, because I'm not that invested. So, that would be the only issue. The, at Game 1, he led with his Groudon Smiggle. He led with Smiggle all three times, and I think I led with Whimsicott all three times, which was really good. And he didn't Dark Void at all in the first two games. So, I did set up Safeguard just in case, but he was always Follow me in and Wide Guarding. And I can't remember what I led... Um, next to my Wimscar, I think I led Xerneas. It was either Xerneas or Gyarados, because Gyarados is amazing in this matchup. It's so good in this matchup, and it was crucial at the end. But game one, it came down position where I had paralyzed his Sylveon instead of waterfalling it for some reason. Probably because the Groudon was out, I think. But the Sylveon was on, I think, full HP, but paralyzed against his Rayquaza, which was Life Orb. I knew that. And I had my Geomancy Xerneas and my Rayquaza on no HP. And all I had to do was extreme speed the Sylveon because he had quick attack. And then he was in Dazzling Gleam and Moonblast range on his Sylveon. But I did not extreme speed because I blanked on the quick attack. And I just Dragon's Ascented the Sylveon instead. He quick attacked and knocked out my Rayquaza. I Dazzling Gleams, knocked out his Rayquaza and uh, did a nice chunk to the Sylveon. But I was actually on almost no HP with my Xerneas. Because I believe he extreme speeded my Xerneas to put me in Hyper Voice range, or two Hyper Voice ranges from his Sylveon, and I had to rely on the full paralysis in the end, at the end of game one as I Moonblasted. He went down to the reds and he didn't get fully paralyzed, so his single target Hyper Voice in the Fairy Aura was able to knock out my Xerneas in game one, which was really bad, because 
all I had to do was extreme speed the Sylveon, it put it in range of the attacks I was going for. So that was a bad mistake on my part. Second game he led with Sylveon Smeagol, I led Gyarados and I believe Xerneas as well. But in that matchup, Gyarados was brilliant. It's Icy Winded, the Groudon when it came in, it waterfalled it in the airlock, it was brilliant. And I pretty much just swept through, there wasn't really much any uh, much he could do at all in game 2, so I won that very easily. Game 3, he went back to his uh, Groudon Smeagol and I did set up my Xerneas, but he got in the end to plus 6 speed with his Smeagol. So there was no way that I was outspeeding it. And if he would have not got the speed boost, there was I was in a position at the end where he just had his Talonflame. He chose Talonflame over Sylveon this time. I had knocked out his Groudon and Rayquaza with a nice waterfall on its Groudon um, after I'd Icy Winded it, which was really nice. Uh, um, in, the, in the game 3, I think he showed Hidden Power Ice, which I already knew. But he Hidden Power Iced onto... No, this was in game 2, actually. He Hidden Power Iced onto my Rayquaza, and it did, like, nothing. It was so funny. Because he had Groudon Sylveon out at that point, so it must have been game 2. And I doubled onto the Sylveon as it protected, which was really bad. But it didn't make a difference, because he Hidden Power Iced my Rayquaza, and did literally nothing. It was really funny. And then he switched to Eruption after that. And I still doubled onto the Sylveon, because it was the best play, because it threatened more with the Hyper Voice. But that was game 2. I'd already... Um, talked about game two. Game three, he had got to plus six with his Smeagol. Plus six speed. He had evasion as well, I think. I think he got to plus one because he got a drop as well. But he did have evasion. And he was just constantly dart voiding me. And I still had my Xer At the end, I had my Xerneas that had Geomancy'd, but was in Brave Bird range. And my Rayquaza, which was in Brave Bird range. And my Gyarados in the back. So I could intimidate the Talonflame. So I switched in, got the Intimidate on the Talonflame. And I was still in Brave Bird range with my Xerneas, so that got knocked out as I was asleep, because he just constantly dart voided that at that point. And then sent in my Rayquaza, which was out of um, Brave Bird range thanks to the Intimidate. But he, because he had the plus 6 speed, he was able to redirect my extreme speed onto the Talonflame, onto his Smeargle. And he Brave Birded my Rayquaza, didn't knock me out, and my Gyarados was also asleep. So it had to wake up as well. And I extreme speeded again onto his Talonflame, he followed me again. Knocked out the Smeagol, and then uh, he Brave Birded my uh, Rayquaza to knock it out. And my Gyarados was just above 50%, and I hadn't taken my Citrus Berry, so it ended up um, not mattering that I woke up that turn and waterfalled the Talonflame. I did have a turn in hand to wake up and waterfall, as long as he didn't get a crit, because I'd have definitely lived at minus one. But I did end up waking up that turn and waterfalled his Talonflame, knocked it out, and I managed to take the set against another, Jap uh, uh, another national champion. So I got the Japanese and the Korean national champion defeated in my Swiss rounds, which is awesome. And I managed to top cut, and that was awesome. So good. And I won match away from prizes, because my aim was the top 16, so I can get my capture card. So it ended up being 24 people that cut, that's why it's a top 24. I had played against Christian before in uh, the Bochum Regionals last year in the final round, and I ended up getting to plus 4 with my Thunderous Nasty Plotting because I was able to encore his Charizard, and that was brilliant. Like, that's a different match, though. He was running a big six with, well, big R, I guess, because it's got Raichu. I didn't know that he had uh, Life Orb on his Raichu. He had Raw on his um, Salamence as well, and he was a banded Talonflame, so that was good information going into it. So he ended up leading with Raichu in the first match. I think it was Raichu Xerneas against my Xerneas and something. I can't remember what it was, but it... Um, the end of the first game came down to him getting up his Geomancy with his Xerneas at the end. It was just his Xerneas at the end with my full HP Rayquaza and my full HP Gyarados. So he had got up his Geomancy. I can't take a Moonblast with either Pokemon. So I extreme speeded his Rayqu uh, his extreme speeded with Rayquaza onto his Xerneas. He Moonblasted my Rayquaza and I Thunder Waved his Xerneas in case the Waterfall wasn't strong enough to knock it out. I Waterfalled, left it on 1 HP and I flinched it which was crucial. I did that at the end of the match, we did discuss whether it mattered or not, and I have survived Moonblast from Xerneas before with my Gyarados, but I ended up doing the Calc afterwards and it does like 102% minimum with the, the special attack investment that he had, which was unfortunate for him. Like It, it was in his favour at that point to knock me out because he just had to get through a flinch chance and a paralysis chance, but that's what para flinch is. And that's why you should have Waterfall over Aquatail, because, well, Aquatail would have knocked him out, but it could have missed, but Waterfall got the flinch. 
which was crucial. But that's why I've said to put a little bit more attack into Gyarados, because the survival on 1 HP has happened significantly often with Gyarados' waterfall. So, just a little bit more attack was needed on Gyarados, but I got the flinch. That was crucial. And then in game 2, I just got up Geomancy with my Xerneas and pretty much swept from there. He ended up not bringing his Groudon, or... Which was the other one? Smeargle, I think he left out. I think, yeah. Yeah, he didn't bring his Groudon, at least, because... I, that, that I found that curious, because he could have threatened my Xerneas with it, but maybe it was a special variant in the end. That would have made the most sense why he didn't bring it, but... I ended up taking the game 2-0, and I've just got the top 16, which is prizes, and now I can buy a capture card. So you can expect capture card quality videos in the future, which is awesome, but downside to getting the top 16, I'm against Barry Anderson. That was really unfortunate. Last two UK people left in, and we get paired in top 16. But that did guarantee that we got at least one UK person into the top 8, but still... Not the best. He was running X-Ray with Volcarona, which is really cool. So I think, I like, going into it, it looked like I had the matchup. I should have had the matchup. But game one, he led with his Smeagol Xerneas. He led with Smeagol Xerneas all three times. I led with my Whimsicott Xerneas. Now, he knows that I've got Safeguard, but surely I don't need to go for Safeguard because he's not going to Dark Void on my potential Safeguard. That was my logic in every single game. So I went for Safeguard game one, he didn't Dark Void, he transformed into my Whimsicott and encored me into Safeguard, which was rubbish. But then I ended up critting his Xerneas. I think as I got Tailwind up, I can't remember though, I think I'd just done some sort of speed control. So I would have outsped next turn. I'm not entirely sure if that's true, but I'm, like, that, I'm pretty sure that's right. But if not, then the crit did matter. It, it just pretty much swung the momentum way in my favour anyway. But that was, the, yeah, game, game 1 was pretty much decided on that crit. And it wasn't over if I didn't crit, so it would have been interesting to see how it would have ended up. But game two, led with Whimsicott, Xerneas again, he led with Smiggle Xerneas. Of course, this time I'm not going to safeguard, because he's not going to Dark Void on my potential safeguard. So I safeguard again. I led with Whimsicott Arcanine in game two, not with Xerneas, because then he transformed into my Arcanine instead, rather than Dark Voiding. So I was trying to get cheeky safeguard on his Dark Void, but game two, he didn't go for that, and he transformed into my Arcanine. And then I had my Xerneas in next to my Arcanine at one point when his Arcanine ult had pretty much no HP and he helping handed as I extreme speeded his Arcanine knocked it out but then he helping hand moonblasted my Xerneas with his Xerneas which did such a big chunk that it put me in extreme speed range and there wasn't really a way I could come back from that after that. So I lost game 2 and then game 3 is over on Barry Anderson's channel. Link in the description to that match, you should go and check it out because I get wrecked. <laughs> Spoilers. But, yeah, he led with uh, Smiggle Xerneas again. I led with Rayquaza Whimsicott. And again, game three. Like, surely I'm not going to safeguard because he's just, he's not going to Dark Void this time. So he should Dark Void because I'm not going to safeguard. So I safeguard. And he doesn't Dark Void. He transforms into a Xerneas. But, yeah, go, go and check out his, um, his analysis of the match. It, it's a pretty good match and it's a real shame that the set wasn't on stream. It, apparently it was really close to being on stream. One of the commentators was really pushing for us to be on the stream, but it wasn't to be, and Barry was able to take the match 2-1 against me. So we still got one UK person into the top eight, and top eight was as far as we went, which is a shame, because he ended up facing Jonathan Evans, who I had beaten in the previous round. So theoretically, I still could have gone on to at least top four if I'd have beaten Barry. But the matchup was heavily in Jonathan's favor, and I think he would have probably adapted to what I had done in the previous set. So I wouldn't say that I would definitely got a top four, but I had every chance because I'd already beaten him. And Barry did get close. There was just one misplay that cost him the match, and it did. It, it was it was very close. He adapted very well in game two. And game three could have been Barry's. If he had have brought Scrafty over Smeagol, then I don't know, the match could have been a bit different, but there we go. That was the end of my tournament run. Ended up coming 13th in the world, which is awesome. I will take 13th any day. If someone told me I was going to get 13th at the begin before the tournament even started, I would have definitely taken that. Because now I've got prizes, I will get a capture card. So that's awesome. So a few shout outs at the end. First off, Team Jamie, Jamie Keane and Jamie Miller for basically putting up with my terrible ideas throughout the whole season. Just <laughs> pretty much 
all my all my ideas, and I have so many bad ones have just been sent, at, uh, like thrown at Team Jamie, and finally a few things, a few good things have stuck. This Exeric Gyarados was one of those terrible ideas, and that managed to stick and become this team. So thanks to Team Jamie, Barry Anderson as well. Thank you for knocking me out of top 16, but also also uh, another person that I've been team, team building with throughout the season and been discussing the meta and all that stuff. So shout outs to Barry Anderson. Go and check out his YouTube channel. Jamie Keenan Miller have, have YouTube channels as well, so go and check them out. Shout outs to Blue for going out of his way to give me bad matchups to practice against. I don't think I'd have won round two if I wouldn't have practiced against your Rayquaza mobile. Uh, Rayquaza Kyogre Mawa, so thank you to Blue. He's got a YouTube channel, go and uh, check that out. It's a shame he can't compete, but he is one of the best players in the UK. Uh, all of UK VGC for supporting us, uh, not just me, but all of the UK players at Worlds. Thank you for supporting us, and also to my YouTube subs for supporting my channel. You can now become one of those YouTube subs because I'm being very shameless and promoting myself, so go and subscribe to me. Thanks for watching.